Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Bruckle Bigron, which looks identical to the Legron in this menu. But when we get to this menu, it looks like the camera is just way too close to the car. But here's the thing the camera is in the exact same location as every other vehicle thumbnail. This car is just absolutely massive. Apparently, it's four times larger than a normal Legrand. So let's go ahead and terrorize the city some by just driving this thing around. And you'll see the speedometer on this thing, it's reading we're going 100 miles per hour almost, but it doesn't feel like it because the car is so big, you don't realize just how fast you're moving. But if we look at how much distance we're covering, yeah, we're going pretty fast. Oh, I just smushed the roof right there. And now we're going to smush the rest of it right into a tree. And that is how you completely ruin a Bruckle Begron. And you might have noticed when we were driving this thing around, it just kind of has some weird sounds going on in the background. I'll let you listen right here so you can hear what I'm talking about, hopefully. So yeah, I don't know what in the world is going on with the sounds for this thing. It's just making all these whooshing sounds all over the place. And I'm kind of curious right here. Will it fit on the pier? Oh, it does. Just barely. <laughs> Although I stripped off both of my doors and all. We just bottomed out. So it kind of fits. And again, just in awe of the size of this thing. Absolute unit. Not everything is so positive though. For example, the brakes on this thing are absolutely terrible. Look, I'm going to slam on the brakes right here. We're slamming on both... The regular brakes and the parking brakes, we're not slowing down. We are just going a little bit faster and a little bit faster as we went down that hill. We're finally slowing down a little bit, but it still just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. It's like it's got the regular brakes from a Legrand on the Big Grand. What will stop it though is crashing into something it can't fit through. I thought maybe it would be able to fit through there. Just barely not able to though. If you actually need to come to a stop though, there is one thing you can do. So you put the car into manual mode and you drive around like normal and when you find the place you want to stop at, what you do is you go ahead and put the car into reverse and you're going to tap the gas pedal. And I do mean tap because if you overheat the clutch, absolutely nothing will happen. So you kind of see I'm like tap, 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 and then it comes to a stop. But if you don't tap it, here's what will happen here. So we're going to get moving. Well, okay, we can barely get moving because the clutch is overheating already but if you just slam on the gas pedal in reverse you overheat the clutch and then nothing happens the clutch is basically disintegrated at this point and there's nothing you can do for forward or backward momentum except for hitting the brakes which barely do anything as you see right here on a flat surface sure it slows it down a little bit but if we let up on the brakes it also slows it down a little bit doesn't it and we're just gonna keep rolling and rolling and rolling there ain't no stopping this thing so here's the funny thing. It looks like we're not even going that fast, right? Because the car's so big. Eight times slower right here. And you just see the car getting disintegrated. And you think, why BR? That was eight times slow-mo, was it? No, that actually was eight times slow-mo. We'll do this again with a little bit less slow-mo to similar speed so you can see just how easily this thing decides to blow itself to bits. I think the car is four times bigger, four times heavier, but not four times more durable. So what we're going to do is just kind of drive this thing into the wall over there. We're going to go as slow as we possibly can. So it's going to be about 30 miles per hour. And this is full speed right here. And you see an impact that didn't look like it was going to be that bad has pretty much destroyed the car. The engine is outside of the engine bay, so it's obviously not going to be driving anywhere. So you got to be pretty careful when you drive this thing to make sure you don't accidentally wreck it. And you'll notice every time you spawn it up, the hood does get a little bit dented up for some reason. It just does that. I don't know why it just does. All right, let's do a quick little 180 right here. Can it 180? Yes, it can. It can actually 180 pretty well for such a giant vehicle. I am shocked. And now we're going to go ahead and try to do a little bit of driving, see how well it can corner. It's actually cornering a lot better than I thought it would. I was trying to cut the corner a little bit because I thought I would have to, but no, it didn't need me to cut the corner right there. You will notice that the high clutch temperature is warning me at all times. And uh-oh, I can't fit. Ha! What kind of idiot designed this city? These things need to be way taller so my car can fit. Now I'm like stuck between two areas. Even if it was driving, I would be like back and forth and going nowhere. Now let's do a Big Ron versus Legron fight. Obviously, the Big Ron should win. The question is just how much will it win by? So we're going to spawn this thing up. and You'll see 
just how much bigger this thing is. It doesn't feel as big as it is when you're driving it, but when you put one of these next to it, it's just like, wow. Like, it can run me over like a speed bump, I'm pretty sure. Let's see if we can or not. I'm just going to park it right in front of one of the tires, and we'll see if it runs me over or not. So how about right there? So I got a little bit of room to get up to speed. We'll save the spot. And then we're going to go to the big run. Accelerate it up a little bit. And then we go back to the Legron. We'll put some slow-mo on. And we're going to see how well it holds up. So the parking brake is on. So it'll hopefully hold its position as well as possible. Get a little bit in the bumper of the big ROM. But in the end, driving right over it pretty much like a speed bump. It's just a really tall speed bump since it hit my bumper. That's all. And there goes the rear tire over it. Nice and easy as well. A little bit of a look at the damage there. I'm curious though, how is the Bagran doing after all of that? Can it still drive? Yeah, looks like it can still drive. It might be kind of messed up on the suspension front, but it's drivable. And I did lose a mirror, so I'm not totally in control of this thing at the moment. We're going to go as fast as I can though and see what happens here. We're going to probably hit the roof. So here's a little bit of slow-mo on that roof hit. Nice. And we're going to hit the hospital too, aren't we? Yep. And just looking at this, if somebody told me this was once a car, I don't know if I believe them. This thing looks nothing like a car right now. This, however, still looks like a car. And I'm thinking it's going to be pretty drivable because, yeah, the roof got crushed in, but all the important bits should be pretty much fine, right? Pulling a little bit to the left, as you can see, but not that bad at all. All right. Oh, well, that does make it bad since we can't really drive anymore. So how about we do this again, but we're going to double up the number of Legrand. So it's going to be like a full on ramp and not just a single car on the left side of the vehicle. So we got to get this thing fixed up. We're going to probably have to align the vehicles. Well, maybe not. I thought I have to adjust the distance between the two Legrands, but it looks like it might fit perfectly on top of them. So we'll make sure both the parking brakes are on. And we're going to go ahead and accelerate while we got the green light and see if it works or not. So there looks like it's lined up pretty well. Going to go ahead and get a nice camera angle on this thing and watch what happens. Come on, right over both of them. Right over both of them. Yes. That is a working like a magnificent ramp. It popped me a little bit into the air. Not a huge amount or nothing. A little bit more of a, a vicious speed bump than a ramp, I would guess. But it worked great. All right, so speed things up. How drivable is it? Seems like it is still reasonably drivable. Not too shabby there. Now, let's go ahead and up the difficulty a little bit. So if it can go over those, no problem. Well, what if the target was taller? What if the target was a T65 ram plow? I'm going to give it the ram plow just so it has something to climb up. Because I don't know how well it would do if there wasn't something to climb up. So there is ram plow number one. And then here is ram plow number two. This should be pretty interesting, and I gotta make sure I put the parking brakes on for the ram plows, and we are ready to go at it. I wanna go like right in the middle of them. So it looks like my alignment's perfect. We'll go ahead and get a nice little camera angle right here and see what happens. Come on, climb it, climb it. Oh, it almost made it. Just not quite. And it is still accelerating though, so maybe it'll keep going. Let's see if we go ahead and speed things up. Nope, it is stuck, so the ram plows are just a little bit too tall for it to climb over. Can the ram plow bully the big car at all though? That's my next question. So we're just gonna back this thing up so we're going hopefully about 20 miles per hour and we're gonna smack into them and see what happens here. You do have enough speed for 20 miles per hour, right? Come on, all right, 20 miles per hour and hit it. Well, that actually did a lot more damage than I expected it to do. It actually pulled off the grill and the front bumper with a single impact. Although I can't get them off of me once they're attached to me and they weigh a lot. Into the side, tear off the door? No, I couldn't tear off the door, but it actually did some damage to the rear as well because I got it going in reverse. Ooh, a lot of damage to the rear. Okay, that gives me an even better idea. What if we do rocket powered bus going at a high speed versus this thing going at a not so high speed? So there's the bus and I'm just gonna go ahead and teleport it back here so I don't have to drive it in reverse forever. So we'll put it all the way over here. That looks pretty good. And then we'll make sure it's lined up pretty straight. All right, that looks good. We'll save the spot. And then we're going to go ahead and get the ramp plow out the way because he's still just sitting in the middle of the road. So I'll just let him uh, drive wherever he wants. I'm going to just leave him driving because I can. So bye-bye, ramp plow. And accelerate this guy. Make sure he's going straight. 
Okay, and then we go to this guy and make sure he's going straight. I think this guy's gonna need some help. Oh yeah, he almost crashed right there. All right, Bust is actually pretty good at going straight all on its own. So this is gonna be a pretty good impact, I think. The bus actually looks like it's big enough to stand a chance because it's going so much faster, I think. Let's see, will they about stop right here? Or is the big car gonna bully the bus out of the way? Looks like they're stopping right there. They're about equal in terms of overall strength and that impact. Yeah, that was actually a really good comparison between the two. One smaller thing going fast and one bigger one going slow. And well, it just made a big old mess in the end. So I want to do something a little bit dumb. We're gonna go to grid map, but we're not going to the normal grid map. We're going to the large grid map, which I have used in a previous video. Normally when you drive around here, everything is so big, you can barely do the suspension tests and stuff. Like you go over here and try to do the suspension test, it's more like a rock climb. Seriously, look, look at this. How is a car supposed to do this easily? This is way more than a suspension test. But if we back this thing up a little bit, and then replace it with the big Ron, it might be a little bit easier. Also, I should mention I'm always using the manual version of the big Ron on purpose because the automatic one doesn't seem to work quite right. So here we go. Suspension test right there. Not that bad. Okay, well, we just lost like a half dozen body panels, but it did make it over a couple before it decided to be completely wrecked. So we need a large grid map, but not this large because this is still too large grid map. All right, all right. How about these? I think they're a little bit less steep, so maybe it'll be able to go over these a little bit easier. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Well, the engine's gonna just fall out, so that's maybe not exactly what I was talking about. Although apparently the engine's still attached enough to put down power, it looks like, so keep on going. Keep on going, Begron, come on, you can get there. No, I can't get there. But it got some of the way until everything went terribly, terribly wrong. I also should mention, this is probably the biggest engine in Beam and G Drive that I've ever seen, or at least one of them. Because that thing is four times the normal size of the engine. So if we put a car next to that, that's probably like the size of a car. <laughs> I gotta test this theory. So, Abishu Pesma, come on down. Let's see if you're the size of the engine in this thing. Like there is one car I'm thinking of that might have a bigger engine. That's the dump truck, because that thing is also massive. Yeah, that engine is about the size of a small car. If you include, you know, all the accessories and stuff, definitely, because this thing could pretty much fit in the engine bay. It could also fit inside of the Begron. And also, it threw me off seeing this car, but I forgot, that car is always there for some reason. So let's go ahead and shove this thing into the Begron and see if it'll stay in there properly or not. So this looks like a good spot. Okay, well, it is inside of the Begron. It's a little bit uh, crooked and inside the chair, but it's inside, so let's see. Can we drive with the vehicle inside of me and keep it in there? Or is it going to fall out? Looks like it's pretty secured in there. It's almost like it was buckled into the front seat since it's kind of attached to the front seat anyways. So let's go ahead and try flying the Begron with the car inside of it and see if that does anything to dislodge it or not. That would probably be a good test for this. So we're going to hit this jump at apparently about 135 miles per hour, maybe even 140. And the Begron got pretty damaged. The car inside of it, though, looks like it's in pretty good shape. Although this is going to destroy the Begron. <laughs> yeah, it became flattened. What about the car inside of it, though? How is that thing doing? Kind of hard to see with all the Begron in the way. So what if we go ahead and remove all of the Begron out of the way and take a look at this? So it fared a little bit better than the Begron, but not by much. Go ahead and bring it back into the Begron and... Try something else. How about we do an off-roading jump? And we'll see if that's enough to get the car to come out of the other car. It is totally possible that there's no way to actually get one car outside of the other car because there's like invisible walls on the doors or something. But I want to make sure I give it a good effort to see if that's the case or not. We're going to be going again over 100 miles per hour. And this is how you off-road. Oh my goodness, this is not going to go well. It just got so destroyed from a simple off-roading thing right there. Can't believe that. It's making all kinds of funny noises again. Now, the Pesma inside looks pretty good. Nice condition to it. So can it escape from the clutches of this thing or is it permanently stuck? Let's see, I think it's permanently stuck, isn't it? Yeah, it's just kind of hitting an invisible wall right here. So we'll go ahead and reset the Begron and then we can see if this thing still drives. 
Yes, it does. So you could use the Bagran as a delivery mechanism for your other vehicles. It's like a car transporter, basically, except it takes up two lanes on the road instead of a normal one, which takes up one lane and is really long. All right, one final test I want to do with this thing. I don't need the other car inside of it. I'm just going to put it in there because it's fun. I saw a really, really deep puddle over there. Well, at least it looks like a puddle compared to the Bagran, hopefully. To a normal car, it is a lake. I just want to see, can the Bagran make it through or not? Although I don't really have any brakes, do I? I can't slow down too well. We're just going to fly into it. And I just want to see, is the engine above or below water? That's all I want to see here. The engine is below water, so it will not be able to make it through there. You can see very clearly it is completely submerged. The whole car is actually submerged. So let's go ahead and change up maps. And ooh, Car Jump Arena might be interesting. Now we get to see how well does the Bagram fly at high speeds. And I want to make sure I have a lot of room to work with. So I'm going to bring it all the way up to here. And hopefully it spawns up right in the middle. I can just drive it from this spot and I don't have to do any tweaking of the location. Make sure it's centered on the road. Let's see. Fingers crossed, and it was not straight on the road, so we're going to have to teleport it into position. We'll try right about here. And that looks pretty good, so we are off. We're jumping the light just a little bit. And ooh, we go straight through those lights, actually. That was unexpected. We could have easily destroyed the roof right there. And this thing, I almost feel like I have no control at the moment. Like, yeah, I hit go left and it actually goes go left, but it doesn't feel like I'm really the one telling it to go left. It's weird. Here's the flight. Gonna get eight times slow on the impact to really see this thing probably get destroyed up. Doesn't look like that harsh of an impact, but it is. Actually, it did a little bit better than I was expecting, to be honest with you. Still looks mostly like a Bagron. Now, not so much. <laughs> the engine is just flying all over the place. We're gonna do this one more run. We're gonna go a lot slower this time, though, and see if we can have a nice, smooth landing with this thing. I think that might be kind of fun to do. So brakes on, brakes on, and as you know, the brakes don't do very much. The main thing is, is I'm not accelerating, so it's not going to go faster than it would normally go for just coasting. So we're only going to be going about 110 miles per hour this time. That is a good chunk slower. Oh, that was smooth. If I could stop, this thing would still be very, very drivable. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to stop in time. And nope, <laughs> it went all the way to the end of the water and then some that was magnificent all right that's all i wanted to do at car jump arena now i'll finish off with the classics like brutal slope i'm gonna actually do things a little bit differently normally here i just back up and change the vehicle while i'm backing up this time i want to make sure the vehicle is lined up because the maneuverability of this car is so poor i don't want to try to be doing a big maneuver to line this thing up with brutal slope i want it to be lined up and ready to go so that looks like a good spot for it We'll grab the Bagron and we are ready to go. I expect this thing to completely obliterate. And you know what might be fun? Why don't we do one of these in full speed? It's been a real, real long time since I've done a brutal slope run with the impact being at full speed. And with this car being so big, you might be able to see a little bit or you might not because it is going really really fast it is just hauling over here at about 270 miles per hour and nope it was going so fast you still couldn't see what happened it was pretty dramatic though i will say that but i know a lot of you guys out there like to actually see what happens in the collision so let's go ahead and do one more run of these make sure i get the slow-mo to a hundred times this time like i normally would i wonder if the crash will last longer than normal because there's so much car to crash from front to back. Like the front half crashes for a few seconds, then the rear half crashes for a few seconds, I'm thinking might happen here. So here we go, slow mo on. Look at those skid marks, they look massive from the last impact. And then let's see how it goes. Yeah, it does look like it's gonna take a little bit longer for the impact, doesn't it? Because like, there's just so much car to crash into the wall. I don't remember them normally taking this long, that's for sure. But once again, we are disintegrating the car can't even identify that there was once a car and if you say oh i know that was a car just looking at the damage you're a liar because cars aren't that big in the first place there's no way you would know that so anyways a quick look at the final records right here just scrap metal scrap metal scrap metal scrap metal anyways we'll finish things up now with a leap of death but i do have one concern about going to leap of death at the moment 
My concern is that it's going to be kind of hard to spawn up the car without it being inside of the mountain a little bit. Also, I haven't tried any colors, but as far as I know, they should work. I want to make sure real quickly, though, by getting a nice bright orange one instead of that beigey brown color we had before. And yep, colors work perfectly fine. It looks like we can actually just drive out of the mountain without much trouble. Awesome. Now, let's see how does it fly. Big time. We already flew once. This is just a much, much bigger flight. In the end, it doesn't look much different than any other leap of death I've done. We'll use some slow-mo right here, although I don't think there'll be much left after this first impact. So that should be a decent camera angle once it's done. There we go. Perfect. Full vehicle in frame. And again, this is another one of those situations where you don't realize how big the car is necessarily, because you can just think those rocks are a lot smaller than they actually are. Uh, yeah, it just becomes completely flat. There's really nothing to even look at anymore. Is it going to continue falling or is it stopping? Uh, it's going to just kind of shimmy on through. Sliding on like a piece of paper through the hole. Okay. Yeah, that thing is crazy flat at the moment. I can't believe that it actually fit through that. And it might just make it all the way down. Just not in a timely manner. It's going to take a while. I like that you can see all the body parts falling down the hill with you though a lot of the time the cars are so small after the body pots get a few feet away from you can't even find them anymore this one though i can see the door halfway down the mountain bouncing all over the place it also helps that i chose such a nice bright color here makes it so much easier to see everything all right come on get to the bottom you made it all this way you better get there perfect so that will do it for this video until next time this has been ybr I'll see ya.